Hi everyone, it's Mike again with another MIDI project. Today I'm going to show you how to build an electronic auto harp and here it is. I call it the easy harp. Using the same method of chord selection I showed you with my easy chord and easy bass guitars in previous videos. The auto harp or corded zither to give it its proper name has been around for some time. It was invented in the 1880s and comes in various shapes and sizes but is basically a strummed string instrument with about 36 strings and bars or buttons which you press to select different chords. The buttons actually mute the strings which aren't in the chord leaving only the chord notes to sound. The number of chords you can play ranges from about 3 to 21 depending on the instrument. My Easy Harp is an electronic version which has 18 touch sensitive strings, equivalent to 61 strings if it was an auto harp, which gives a 5 octave range and can play 48 different chords with only 5 buttons, like this. had virtually all the parts lying around my workshop but buying all new parts I reckon you could keep the cost down to around 30 to 35 pounds. It can be used as a MIDI controller or as a completely self-contained instrument depending on how many features you want to build in. Pressing these five buttons in various combinations will give you 48 different chords all the major, minor, seventh and minor seventh chords. In a previous video I showed you my easy chord instrument which has six chord buttons so you can play 72 different chords as well as a further 24 chords which can be selected as an alternate set. But I wanted to keep this instrument simple in the spirit of the original auto harp although the easy harp can still play way more chords. These three buttons select one of the seven root notes of the chord the maths is not important but you may be interested to know how I worked it out. Using binary numbers this button represents 1, this one is 2 and this one is 4. So in combination we can get the numbers 1 to 7 representing A major to G major. And if you stroke or touch the string sensors it sounds like this. A B C, D, E, F, and G. These are the only positions you have to memorize and it's very easy to do so. The fourth button sharpens the chord like this. A major to A sharp major, C major, to C sharp major. Of course if you sharpen B major you get C major. The flats are arrived at by selecting the equivalent sharp chord so E flat major would be the same as D sharp major and so on. Now if you want to play a minor chord you just press the minor button here. C major to C minor and so on. Finally, for 7th and minor 7th chords, we use the short strings like this. C major, C 7th, C minor, C minor 7th, and so on. I used a piece of 3mm white perspex for the body, although you could use other materials. I think plywood would be easy to use. The neck and battery box are made from standard 40 by 25 mm PVC cable ducting. The neck was a bit too flexible so I stiffened it up with a strip of aluminium angle cut to fit. Again you could use many different materials for these parts. The instrument has an on off switch, MIDI out which goes to any MIDI capable sound generator such as a keyboard, PC, laptop iPad or iPhone 
or MIDI sound generator like the one I showed you how to build in my last video. There's plenty of room in the instrument to fit the VS1053 sound module inside. Also I fitted a stereo headphone stroke audio output jack for later use. There are two LEDs, one is the power indicator and the other is a MIDI monitor showing any MIDI messages going out. I left a space up here to fit a small speaker to make the instrument completely self-contained. There's a 16x2 LCD display to show the MIDI instrument selected as well as volume level, hammer on off which we'll go into later and string sensitivity which is the adjustable level for the sensitivity of the 18 touch sensor strings. You can also save all the settings which automatically load whenever you switch on. I kept the control button simple with up, down and select and finally I thought it would be a good idea to make the neck adjustable. So by moving two nylon nuts and bolts you can move the neck up and down to three different positions. This is what it looks like underneath. I'll just take the covers off so you can see a bit better. There are six AA batteries in here. This is the neck with the five key switches and nylon nuts and bolts to secure the neck. This is the main board with the PIC 18F452 controller. And here's the back of the LCD with a serial interface which needs only three wires going to it. Eventually I'll fit a back cover but I haven't quite decided how to do that. That's the beauty of this project. You can make the body and lay out the string sensors, chord buttons and controls any way you want to, depending on your own preferences. Well, that's it in a nutshell. Now I'll go into detail about the design and how you can build one yourself. As usual, there are links below to the schematics, parts list, dimensions, code and playing instructions needed to get the project up and running. The main board contains the PIC microcontroller, which is basically a MIDI controller with 18 touch sensor inputs and a MIDI output. I used an 18F452 because I've got loads of them and it has all the necessary features. It runs at 40 MHz with a 10 MHz crystal so it gives plenty of speed and has plenty of I.O. pins. In the original design for the touch sensor inputs I used some ports with Schmidt trigger inputs that's port C and D combined with port B which has TTL inputs. Big mistake! You have to use all Schmidt trigger inputs because of the different on and off levels. Unfortunately this meant that I couldn't use the internal serial module on RC6 and instead I had to use an ordinary I.O. pin on port B, RB1 and bitbang the MIDI output at 31.25 kilobits per second. By that I mean that for every MIDI serial byte the pin is switched on and off in the code and the timing carefully worked out for the correct board rate. It's actually not as difficult as it sounds. The LCD serial output is also bit banged on RB2 at 9.6 kiloboard. And output to the LCD module which has a simple homemade PIC 16F 1825 serial interface. I used port A for the five chord button inputs and the three control buttons were connected to port B. The touch sensor trigger pulse is generated at RB0. You can use just about any metal for the strings and I used 2mm brazing rod which is cheap, easy to solder and works extremely well. I used strip board for the prototype and I was very concerned about how the touch sensor strings were wired up and routed through the board to the pick because stray capacitance can cause mistriggering of the touch sensors. As it turned out there wasn't too much of a problem although I have made provision to alter the touch sensor sensitivity with the control buttons. If there's enough interest in this project I'll definitely get some PCBs made up to house all the components including the LCD interface and options 
for an audio amplifier and VS1053 board. Then I'll be able to make sure that the touch sensor routing is optimal. I could also make programmed picks available, so let me know if you're interested. The chord select buttons are standard keyboard switches and caps, which were chosen because they have a very light actuation weight. Most other push switches are hard to push and difficult to keep depressed when you're holding a chord. The display shows the current selected instrument on the top line from 1 to 128. The bottom line shows V for volume, which can be from 1 to 9, H is for hammer, which can be 1 for on or 0 for off. Hammer on means that as you touch the string sensor, the note sounds and hammer off means that when you touch the string nothing happens but as your finger leaves the string the note plays imitating the action of plucking a string S is the string touch sensitivity from 1 to 9 where 1 is extremely sensitive and in fact the note will probably sound before you touch the string and 9 is least sensitive Sensitivity does vary from person to person and the right setting for me was 3 or 4, which would probably be fine for most people. Finally, Save saves all the settings for the next time you switch on. When you switch on, the cursor is at the instrument number select position on the units. So pressing the up or down button will select different instruments. Pressing the red button moves the cursor to the next position, which is volume level, and so on. To hammer. string sensitivity and save. A further press brings the cursor round again but this time to the tens position of the instrument number so you can move more rapidly through the instruments if you want to. And finally back to the instrument number units. I just want to say a few words about the touch sensor system I used. A lot of modern microcontrollers have built-in capacitive touch sensor capability, which in my opinion are quite complex and somewhat difficult to use. There's been a very simple method around for many years which is much easier to implement and simple to code, and here's a brief explanation. A short pulse is generated on RB0 and fed to all the string sensor inputs via 100k resistors. Immediately RB0 goes positive, there is a short delay and the string sensor pins on ports C, D and E are red. If they read 1, then the string hasn't been touched and no note is played. But if there is a finger on the sensor, the extra capacitance to ground delays the rising edge of the trigger pulse and it reads as 0 which would indicate a note played. Varying the short delay between the start of the trigger pulse and reading the string input pins allows us to vary the string sensitivity. Also with a 5 volt supply the Schmidt trigger inputs trigger on at above 3 volts and stay on until the input goes down to less than 1.5 volts which gives much more reliable string triggering compared to TTL level inputs. Well that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'd greatly appreciate any comments or questions below. See you soon with another electronic project.